it's shocking to you to see things fly, things come off the shelf and you're looking and there they are, objects, dolls turn on. So it's all the same, everything, it's scary. <laughs> disaster ever to strike this country in the Texas coast. They could see it coming in and that they knew the wind was getting higher and higher. Galveston was not half underwater. It was completely underwater. And as the building collapsed, they literally drowned. Walmart, a superstore where your family can buy groceries, get your prescription, and go to McDonald's all in one stop. Not expecting a place that's haunted, right? Well, if you come to 6702 Seawall Boulevard in Galveston, Texas, you're in for a treat. Galveston Island is located right outside of Houston, Texas, situated on the Gulf of Mexico. This island has a long history of innocent deaths, especially from the Great Hurricane of 1900. Up to 12,000 people died the evening of September 8th that year. A building named the St. Mary's Orphan Asylum housed 10 nuns and over 90 children. During the hurricane, they waited anxiously inside while the sisters had the children sing the French song Queen of the Waves to calm them down. Soon after, the children saw something coming their way. So as they watched through the balcony, the water was rushing in and rushing in. The nuns tied the children 8 to 10 with a clothesline. And as the building collapsed, they literally drowned. And later down the road, when they were doing the rescue, they were digging in the sand and they found them children tied with the clothesline as he dug one out, another one out, another one. Three out of 103 total occupants survived. The rest perished. Today, Many of those believe that the spirits of the orphans linger where the orphanage once stood, which is now occupied by this Walmart. Employees of this store have encountered spirits playing with them along these aisles. I heard something kind of funny. It was a giggle. And it was a little child's giggle. It, wasn't a, it didn't sound like an adult playing a game or anything like that. Uh, so I, I said, hello? And I tried to make it, I was that a girl, a little girl, or a little boy, I don't know, but I said, hello, is anyone there? So, didn't hear anything after that. Most of these occurrences happen during the night shifts at around three or 4 a.m. One worker reports a bike falling off of a bike rack, almost striking her on the head. Another witnessed a lady in white roaming the aisles. Could that possibly be a nun searching for her kids? Or something more sinister at play? And then also in the compactor where we put our trash out, one lady told me it was her story that she heard somebody say, help me, help me. And when she went to get help, there was nobody there. Other supernatural behavior includes items flying off the shelves. You know, like say you get stocking and stuff, just like this is nice and neat, like this here. And a few minutes after you pass by, so two or three of these boxes will just pop off the shelf. Now there's nobody in the store but me and other people that's working throughout the area and stuff, right? So we never really paid it a lot of attention. Cheese falling off the pegs. But before, they would fly off when yeah. you'd be stopping. Well, they were on hangers. Yeah. And they'd yeah. pop off the hanger, see? And an imprint of a child's foot found near the back of the store. My friend that works in a, a stationery had a customer and needed something to craft, so you gotta walk. And all of a sudden, they saw a balloon, and then it started traveling all the way to where they're at and then when they noticed it it looked like somebody was home the balloon was walking with the balloon and the same thing happened to the guy in uh in sporting goods 
the balloon went back and forth as he was working. And it was a balloon, right? It was a balloon that, you know, that hang from the ceiling or whatever stuff, right? And it just drifted down. So I figured, you know, out of healing or whatever, not a problem, right? So I was walking around and the balloon was falling, right? So what I did was like, you know, I got the balloon, I took it back to toys, right? And went back to doing what I was doing and stuff, right? A few minutes later, the balloon was back behind. I was like, I'm not gonna worry about it, right? But I was walking around and the balloon was just kind of hovering around with me. You know what I'm saying? After about an hour or so, it just kind of played itself out on which a different area, you know, just forgot about it. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, let's go in it. Make no mistake in that. Just across the street, the ocean creeps nearby. And divine the ocean and the Walmart is a signage along the seawall, which states that this location is the original site of the St. Mary's Orphan Asylum, reminding us how it all went down. With all this research about the storm, the orphanage, and the children, a couple friends and I decide to uncover the truth. Are there really spirits roaming the aisles of the Galveston Walmart? Oh. <laughs> this is what you gotta catch. Stay here. No, bye. I'm going home. Come on in. Let's find out. Friday, April 19th, 2019. Gino, Caitlin, and I drive to Galveston. We are then accompanied by Denise Sandoval. Denise has been employed at this Walmart for over 15 years and has always played around with the spirits while she worked. Growing up here, she lived at the also haunted Tavale Mansion was a caretaker after she moved out. She knows everything about this cursed place they call Galveston, which is why she's in the middle of writing her own book, planning to be called Galveston Ghost Tales. With that being said, we were lucky to have her join us in our investigation. So just like the other day, I was working in toys, and as I was stocking, lifting something up on the top shelf, all of a sudden the doll turns on, and it turns off. So then I push the next button, and it doesn't go on again. We started off our search by going to the aisle she encountered that child. Oh, are y'all here? Let's make music. Have the bar. The Look. Can you have the bar? The Look. Can you press my flashing light? Press it again. Y'all know I'm here. Come on. They want to see what y'all all about. Tell the story. Oh. What's your name? What's your name? Are you a little boy? Make the other one put some music on for me. And now I like to hear the music. I'm getting chills. Oh, uh, yeah. You want to play me some ABCs? Yeah. Sir? Oh, no. my no. God. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. This one turned yeah. on by itself. Oh, this light. Play the song. Yeah, dude. Yeah, did. These toys don't have any motion sensors. We don't have any explanation on how they turned on. We go home, yo. <laughs> Soon after, a toy falls between Gino and Caitlin without neither of them touching it. Oh. <laughs> this is what you gotta catch. Stay here. <laughs> no, bye. I'm going home. Next, we put a ball in the middle of an aisle to see if any children wanted to play, which sadly didn't All work. Right. I don't care if it hits me. Kick it towards me. Kick it towards Caitlin. That way, kick it. Kick the ball. Come on, kiddo. Kick it towards Jeff. <laughs> kick it towards Gina. <laughs> and for our last experiment, we use this contraption. This machine is called a spirit box. It is used for contacting spirits by utilizing radio frequencies. We carried the box and a couple old photographs around to different departments of the store to see if any lost souls would like a chance for them to be heard. I know as a little boy they play in the toys all the time, so if you're lingering around with a spirit, say something. What is that? Yeah. What did you say? Did you say something? Yeah. In this clip, as we were walking towards the spirit box, I failed to see a toy fall behind Caitlin. How did that toy fall? Exactly. Come on, hit Caitlin. Yeah, drop that Barbie. Drop that Barbie doll. 
Whoa. Can you see my screen? What? It just starts turning black. While I was recording, the uh, screen just turns black. I don't know why I didn't touch it or anything. I don't know why my camera was acting up. That has never happened to me before. At the end of this investigation, all three of us concluded that there's something unusual and maybe supernatural that's happening at that Walmart. We would never know why these kids here, but we all know that a lot of people drown in the nighttime the storm. So my opinion is that their bodies are still lingering here with the spirits. Perhaps the children of St. Mary's Orphan Asylum still lingers there, hoping one day they can belong in a family they call their own, which makes them the lost orphans of Galveston Island.